Welcome to After the Pool, the video series where I discuss about comic books. That's right, guys. Any comic books that I did not cover on a previous video this week. And let me tell you, it was a hefty week. I'm Mike Spider Slayer. Welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. If you love daily comic book content, if you love me helping you make decisions of what comic books have got to buy, excuse me, you guys came to the right place. Why don't you consider hitting that subscribe button? And of course, guys, don't forget about Mutant Beaver Comics. They have over 4,000 exclusive variant comics in their store. And guys, if you love that kind of thing, well, check out the link down below. It is Corner 10. And when you use that link, not only can you save 10% off of your first purchase, but you can save 10% off of your other purchases as well. So check out MutantBeaverComics.com. So with that being said, let's get started with this week's After the Pull. All right, so this week, hefty week. 23 comics altogether that I purchased this week. I covered seven of them over on Worthy Ones. I'll leave that video at the end of this video. I read 11 so far for this current comic book week. I was out of town this weekend with the family doing a dance competition with my daughter. So I still have five left to read. And the books that we still have to cover is Titans issue 10. I have the Untold Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue two. I got Tom King's Wonder Woman I still have to read. I have Helen of Windhorn, another hefty book I have to read, and then World's Finest. So those are the books that I will not have a chance to cover this week. So let's talk about the books now that I did read. The Spectacular Spider-Man, this is issue two. This book is a 28 page comic for the price of $4. The writer here is Greg Wiseman and the art is done by Herberto Ramos. The artwork is really well done, guys. It's just, um, you know, I loved Herberto Ramos when he was on The Amazing Spider-Man. I think the facial expressions of all the characters are really well done and I, I, I know like he did um, Strange Academy for the longest time, so it's like, I like how he draws younger people, uh, you know, gives them a lot of life and they're very vibrant. Uh, here we get to see everybody in the coffee bean, which is kind of cool. And what makes this comic fun is just Miles and Spider-Man, or Miles and I should say Peter Parker, interacting with all those characters, right? It's just not the two of them, it's everybody else and these, you know, supporting cast members have an integral part of the story because they're kind of living their best lives and you saw that in the first issue and then there's something more than meets the eye here, right? We get to see this one guy here who's like the best friend thought he was hooking up with this girl and when he actually goes to give her a kiss at the actual place she works, she's like, hell no, we're not together. So it's led to believe like people are being cloned or being brainwashed. You're not quite sure there's this mystery here. And then you get to see a cool little fight scene once again with Miles and Peter as they're fighting the vermin uh, clones. So yes, is there a lot of clones in this book? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but it's still entertaining and it's still right now a fun read and you get a surprise visit with Shift. And if you read the most recent issue of Miles Morales, well, obviously Shift is okay, right? So you get, you know, by the time you get to the end of this book, you get a, cl a crazy cliffhanger of where these kids could be possibly going to get their best lives and with this guy right here, this villain, right? So this book was a solid read. I am gonna give this one a solid B. I don't think this is anything that is like totally blowing me out of the water, but it's much better than the Amazing Spider-Man comic so far uh, as a consistency piece. I know it's only two issues in, but again, I like the interactions between Miles and Peter. I think it's a lot of fun and the interactions with all the other characters. The artwork is good and uh, we'll see where this book goes in the long term. It's still yet to be determined, but I definitely recommend this book. Spider-Woman, this is issue six, legacy numbering 122, 28 pages for the price of $4. Um, this book is written by Steve Fox and the art is done by Igor 
era. Uh, the art's good. I like the facial expressions in this book as well. It definitely gives the characters a lot of emotion. There's a lot of action that happens in this book, which is appreciative. So it's really a high-paced type of book. Uh, I don't think this book really, I would say, progresses the story all that much. But if you're looking for an action-packed issue, this, this is where it was at. So what this issue was about was Jessica now is dealing with the loss of her son, Jerry. Obviously, he's aged up. If you read the whole gang war situation and now she needs a reprieve, she's heading to San Francisco and she basically is going on this train, right? Well, Hydra recruited Star, which we haven't seen Star in quite some time. It's kind of like well, what's her point in the Marvel Universe? And I felt like, okay, well, let's pick Star because we haven't seen her in quite some time. And let's use her in this book, okay? And she's hired by Hydra to take Jessica Drew in. And Jessica just can't have a, you know, time to herself to kind of just unwind and relax on her way there. She has to do this battle. And there's, you know, again, it's just a high-paced action type of fight. Uh, she winds up winning. She winds up getting this ride to the airport. And uh, that's basically it. There's not much that really happens, again, except for Jessica saving all the people in the train. Uh, you know, a little kid, little boy reminds her of her son when he was younger. And now the journey to San Francisco continues and she's going to uh, come across another adversary. I feel like this is a literal bridge between, you know, the last story arc and what's happening or what's going to happen in the future story arc here. If you're expecting a lot of story progression, you're not going to get it. I love the character Jessica in this comic book, right? I think it's, it's really well done. However, it is a little slow and it's kind of more the same where she teamed up with spider boy and the last issue so i think it's taken a little bit too long to get to the next story arc i felt like two issues of non-real story progression it's not needed but uh i don't know we'll see where it goes i want this comic to get better so i'm just gonna give this one a c it was very average for me this is a forgettable issue in the overall grand scheme of things i feel like if you get another story arc, you know, you're going to be like, what happened two issues ago? So that's the way I look at this one. Hopefully it continues to improve. Spider-Boy issue six. This is 28 pages for $5 written by Dan Slott. And you have two artists on this one. You have Julian Shaw and Paco Mandina, who's usually the regular artist that does the entire book. The colors look great. It's a bright and vibrant comic book. Uh, everything is, it, it doesn't overwhelm you with action where you get lost in the action. Uh, and just seeing this, these cast of characters, uh, is really good. These like mutate characters, right? They're awesome. And, uh, we get a little backstory of what's her name? Madam Monstrosity. So that's pretty cool too in this comic. So seeing all these characters are really neat, right? Now, let me tell you before I get into it. Spider Boy is like really low key good. I don't feel like enough people are talking about it. And I feel like the more and more issues come out of this story, the better this gets. It doesn't rely on any other spider characters to tell a good story here. Spider Boy is his own guy, and uh, we have his own supporting cast here. And you can't help feel for Spider Boy on what he's gone through and his little friend, Christina. Uh, I think it's it's awesome. So in this comic, we learn more about Mon Madame Monstrosity on how she changes her people into animals and how she is a high evolutionary. Like she, she idolizes him and tries to, you know, yes, be like him, but not copy the work he does. And she was embarrassed by Spider Boy in the past. So she winds up capturing her little his little girlfriend Christina here and winds up changing her into like a, a pigeon character right and she's just like hey I don't think it worked and this and that and all of a sudden now she's got to go through the um the initiation or uh the movie on what it's like to be one of the the people of my monstrosity on how you can you know make your money and how you're can be in this society and, and all that type of other stuff 
And you know, when I got done reading it, I was like invested in it. I was like, man, I really know her motive now after watching this little orientation movie that she provided. And the desperation that you get to see on Spider Boy here on trying to rescue her was really a lot of fun as well. And then you get a little bit of a secret here when it comes to Spider Boy's mom. Really good, guys. This is a solid comic book. My hat's off to Dan Slott for creating this Spider Boy character and actually doing something with him. He's not like this flavor of the week type of spider character, right? Really good stuff, man. I highly suggest this one. I'm gonna give this comic book an A, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the direction of the character, even after this initial story arc. Miles Morales, Spider-Man. This is issue 19, the fallout from issue 300. Legacy numbering 301, 28 pages, $4. Cody Ziegler writes this comic. Federico Vincentini does some spectacular art in this comic. Check out this little pinup page with Rabble versus Miles Morales. The action in this comic is just balls to the walls. It just doesn't stop. It just keeps going and going and going. It's in your face, right? I mean, it's everywhere. Um, and then we get to the point where Miles Morales in this battle loses his eyesight. And then what happens is it becomes a black and white comic with red narration from Miles in this comic. And it's just like, holy shit. Um, this is just a really good comic book. Just seeing how desperate Miles is to save his friends from possible death um it's just really really good and uh that's really what this comic is it's a conclusion to issue 300 uh because we get to see all the um all the different uh villains like scorpion and rhino and just taskmaster and everybody else they're all under rabble's control and their nerve centers can get burnt out super quick just a fantastic book overall. Miles definitely prevails. Shift needs some serious help at the end of the day, and he winds up bringing, uh, bringing him to Miles' house, and so it looks like he's going to be living with him and getting the medical attention. Just, just overall, it just concludes that issue 300. This is, this is definitely a wonderful comic book, and it just keeps getting better and better. And what made this comic book great or this story arc great was the character of Ravel. I have said for years now that Miles Morales must develop an arch nemesis for himself. And when he does, that's when the comic is going to get great. And I think Ravel was a great character and she lost her communication skills now with the drones and stuff like that. And what happens to her? I don't know, but this was a, definitely a story arc in the right direction. Let's see now where Miles goes from here. I think it's going to be connected to Blood Hunt for a while. And uh, after that, I don't know. We'll see. But this was a great, great story, guys. Another A-plus for me when it comes to Miles Morales Spider-Man. Black Widow and Hawkeye. This is issue two. This is a 28-page comic for the price of $4. Our creators here are Stephanie Phillips and Paolo Villaniti. I don't know if I said that name right. Here is your artwork in this comic, the opening pages. Uh, there are definitely some crazy action scenes that happen in this book as well. Uh, nice little flashback scene. This is a page right here where we get to see uh, Clint Barton get affected by a poison dart that was shot at him. So, and then here we get to see Black Widow as her symbiotic self right now. Um, listen, I think it's kind of cool that Natasha is a symbiote by the name of Widow, but at the same time, I just kind of like Natasha as Natasha. You know, she doesn't need to be something greater. You know, she's her own great character, right? So her relying on a symbiote is something that I don't necessarily like so much, but it is what it is, and who's to say it's not permanent? But in this issue, we wind up getting to see um, basically Natasha... Uh, just talk with Clint about the situation at hand, the assassination, and then we get to see this character again after Clint Barton who poisons him. She uses the symbiote to try to keep him alive. Uh, and you get to see the emotions between these two. Even though they have this history, they still do care for each other. You get this nice little uh, flashback moment in the comic. 
And then we get introduced to the main villain here as the, the head honcho sits there and interrogates the guy that hired him to kill Clint Barton. He's like, well, I poisoned him and there's no way he can survive. And he's like, screw you. He throws, throws him off the freaking uh, balcony or whatever it is. And he's just like, okay, well, that guy's dead, right? And then you find out the main guy behind all this. And his name is Damon Drain. Like... I know nothing about this guy, right? And I think he appeared in a, was it Daredevil? I looked it up and I forgot. It was a Daredevil issue back in the 70s or something like that. I don't know. I have no idea who the guy is, but I like this book. I think it's fun. I think the interaction between the two characters are a lot of fun. Uh, and then we'll see what issue three has to offer. But, you know, I think Stephanie Phillips has written some good stuff recently. I think she wrote uh, the the Cap Wolf comic really nice. And now she's doing a great job here. So we'll see how this one continues. But I definitely recommend this one. I'm going to give this one a B minus. It wasn't like the best thing once again. But still, it was very entertaining. Spawn, issue 352. This is a 24-page comic for the price of $3. Our writers here are Todd McFarlane and Corey McConaughey, And the art is done by the wonderful Brett Booth. This artwork looks absolutely awesome, guys. Uh, you just can't deny Brett Booth's artwork. It's it's gory at many times, too, especially in the beginning of this comic book where, like, some guy gets chopped in half. Like, <laughs> look at that, dude. That's just insane, right? So what this comic book is about is really about the vampires here. The dead zones have expanded and no one has powers. Heaven, hell, and we just get to see normal everyday people that were posing as humans, right? They they just got their, their uh, true forms being shown here and they can't do the mission that they were supposed to do. Uh, but but it opens up with the vampires just taking on all of hell's creatures and uh and it gives you a little bit of a story as when the dead stones first started it was like vampires started taking over 40 percent then it's 70 percent their job is to rule the world right and then we get to see spawn team up with this female chick i don't even know who she is i think she's an unknown character and then there's this anomaly where she does have her power so i have no idea who this girl is if you know who she could be let me know in the comments below i have not really read all that much of the actual spawn main comic book so there's a lot of holes in my brain when it comes to the lore of the character and its history right then we get to see a lot of the negotiations happening with with the vampires and how they're going to you know rule and all this other stuff which is kind of got which is cool and this is that major character blood right and then by the time you wind up getting to the end of the character and we saw this i think in the last issue there was this guy that was sending like his friends into this room or whatever it is i don't know if it was supposed to be a safe haven but he set up his friends to wind up getting killed in order for him i think to live i think that was the case they were angels right and they became human and so it's like oh well, we're gonna go here to be safe so in order for this guy to survive he set them up all to be killed against this reaper character and he looks freaking badass right and this guy's name is Eddie Frank, lawnmower guys, Eddie Frank, and I think he was Redeemer at one point. So let me know in the comments below if you know who this guy actually is and how he became this way. And uh, I would really appreciate that. But this book is, is freaking awesome, dude. For the price that it is, for the artwork that you get, for the wonderful storytelling that you get, I think this is definitely well worth it. It's a B plus for me. I wish sometimes they would do a little bit more, uh, I, I don't know, maybe a little backtracking or give you a little bit more history on certain characters. But nevertheless, that's just me not keeping up with the series. Uh, I just, I always love the synopsis pages that Marvel does in the beginning of their comic books. And I wish every single comic book did that because it would give an easier, it would be easier for readers to understand if you're just trying out a series or, you know, a book hasn't come out in a month and you're like, oh, okay, this is what happened. And I wish that's what Spawn did here. But nevertheless,
nevertheless, great book. Ultimate Black Panther, this is issue three, 28 pages for the price of $5. Our writer is Brian Hill and our artist is Stefano Casilli. Artwork continues to impress. The colors are bright and vibrant. Again, character emotions in this comic is great, especially in the beginning when you wind up getting to see Shuri and Okoye uh, interact with each other. Like, they actually fight each other, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, and, you know, this book did not have a lot of action in it. It was a lot of just interactions between Killmonger and... Uh, T'Challa himself, right? And we got to see him explore this cave and, you know, Killmonger just sits there and says, you know, there's a lot more going on than Wakanda. And uh, it is, it's just an exploration, an exploration piece. It reminded me a little bit of Indiana Jones. And by the time they wind up getting to the end of this comic, uh, you, want, you, you come across Storm. And Storm is introduced for the first time in the Ultimate Universe. And we wind up seeing, at the end, something very grand. And you're kind of like, oh man. You're like, just as I'm starting to get into it, and just as the star story is starting to get good, you're left with that cliffhanger. And you're like, shit. But this book did remind me of Indiana Jones and like the Temple of Doom or something like that because they found something very important uh, to the story, right? Uh, listen, if you're invested into the Ultimate Universe and you read the first two issues of Ultimate Black Panther, this is just a little slow down in the story. Uh, I felt that more could have happened in here, uh, but still, it was a great read. I really enjoyed it and uh, it's a it's a B for me just because it's like I wanted something more. I felt like the interactions between Killmonger and uh, T'Challa were cool, but you didn't get to see them actually meet. They're just there, you know. Um, unless I missed it in the last issue, I don't know. But still fun read. I will definitely recommend this series. It, it's the only Black Panther series I've ever really stuck with, so I'm gonna continue it. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Batman Off-World, this is issue four. 28 pages, $4, it's finally back. Jason Aaron, Doug, Doug Meineke does the artwork in this comic. My gosh, this the artwork in this book just looks absolutely phenomenal. Just all the characters are beautiful. I'm trying to show you maybe a really good page here, but look at the facial expressions in that. Like that is super sick right there. Uh, from Ion, I think that's how you say her name. And then we get this like two page spread with Batman and his cyber, cyber wolf. And then you get like this, he's not like an evil, evil hawk man. He's just like a bounty hunter, right? And he kind of looks like this. And we get to see him go after Batman because Batman is wanted uh, for all the crimes that he committed, right? And uh, Batman feels like the galaxy is not safe. His mission is not you know, not done, right? It's like he took on the bad guy in the beginning of this comic by the name of Sin and now he's going after uh, the, the person that's in control of everything. Uh, I forgot the organization's name or whatever it is. And uh, she's the one that hired the the Hawkman guy to like go after and, and defeat him, which I thought was, which is so cool, you know? And they do, they do this freaking kick-ass battle and you're just like, oh man, I can't wait to see what happens at the end of the last page here. But overall, I mean, a, a phenomenal comic book like you get to see james gordon who's sitting there showing off the bat symbol and batman's nowhere to be found because he should be home at this point but he's not because he has that mission at hand to save the galaxy because there's slaver kids there's kids being orphaned there's kids being killed off just like all kinds of crazy stuff man this book is great. Hopefully, if you can, if you haven't started reading this yet, you can find find some back issues on the on the you know comic shelves. But I don't know. I think it's going to be hard. But uh, if you are reading this, I want to know in the comments below what you thought of this. This is an A plus. In fact, these next few books that I'm going to be talking about are all top picks for me this week. So uh, it was a solid week in comics, in my opinion. But tell me what you thought about this one, guys. Avengers Twilight, issue 5. 40-page comic for the price of $5. My gosh. Written by Chip Zdarsky and art is done by Daniel Acuna. You want to talk about action in this comic. It is all-out action. 
Like we've been setting this comic up to get to this point right here because Red Skull reveals himself in this book and there's no longer any fake Avengers. You wind up getting to see the real Avengers at hand here try to take on Red Skull and his sick way to rule the world. I mean, it is insane. And yes, it's a combination of like he writes Skull and Ultron together in this like Ultron body and uh, just everything that your old school Avengers have to do to defeat Red Skull is just it's just again their backs are against the wall and uh, they're doing everything that they can to uh, to stop them and there's a possible nuke that's going to hit the United States and it could cause catastrophic damage. The big thing in this comic is you get to see Tony Stark interact with his son. And um, I thought it was quite interesting on like, obviously, you know, the damage that he has and everything that he's gone through as a kid and how his, you know, how his, his dad abandoned him. And, you know, he has all these daddy issues, you know, uh, but what really surprised me at the end of this comic is we got introduced to another character and why didn't i think of this earlier but the character that you that you got introduced is i'm not going to tell you i'm going to leave that for you to read in case you haven't read it yet but i was like wow that, why didn't i think about this this character earlier because it's an avenger right and i was like wow that is crazy dude and i cannot wait i think we got one more issue to go with this and it's over but just when you thought a book couldn't get any better, this one definitely delivered on all levels. A plus, like I said, the rest of the books along the way get A pluses. A phenomenal read here, guys. Superman, issue 13, House of Brainiac. This is part two. You could be reading the best Superman event in quite some time, guys. Legacy numbering 856. 28 pages. This is a $5 comic written by Joshua Williamson. The art is done by Rafa Sandoval. My gosh, guys. The artwork in this comic is, again, top notch. Great stuff here. We get to see Lobo do a quick battle between... Uh, we see Lobo and Superman do the quick battle with each other here as we get to see Lobo actually team up with Superman. And Lobo is quite intrigued with superman's anger it's like he's never seen him this way before because you know his family winds up getting captured by brainiac and they got to try to catch up to brainiac and stop him before whatever plan that he's going to do also in this comic we wind up getting to see something is very much wrong with brainiac he goes through this this trauma this sickness right and you also get to see a bunch of other brainiacs so I, I don't know where all these other Brainiacs have come from, uh, but maybe they were cloned or created, and that's why he's going through, I don't know, the this, this situation that he is. Maybe he's dying and he's trying to create the perfect self of him. I don't know, but great, great book overall. The team up was awesome. They get their own motorcycles. Just a fun read overall, guys. A great Superman event. So if you've been wanting that Superman comic book, here you have it. If you like Lobo, you got that too. And if you wanted these two to team up together, well, you got the trifecta and you got the big badass here. And then of course you got Lex Luthor working with Brainiac to, uh, you know, to gain some kind of advantage. Obviously, you know, Lex Luthor is going to look out for himself at the end of the day more than anything. Anything that benefits him. And then something definitely happens at the end of this comic book with uh, uh, Kara and Connor. I, I thought that was kind of cool too. But man, great comic book. Another A+. Plus. Like I said, top pick. We're two issues in. It's still good. And the first issue had a lot of action. The second issue kind of fleshed out the story a little bit more. And then I think in free comic book day, we're going to get like a 2.5 issue. So that kind of, you know, keeps you going until, you know, part three. So great stuff here, guys. I heart Skull Crusher issue two, or I should say, I love Skull Crusher issue two. This is a $5 comic written by Josie Campbell. Josie Campbell, you're writing a phenomenal series. An absolutely joy to read this comic book. And the artwork here by Alessio Zano is great. This is just reminds you of like an anime 
type of style of comic book, but it's such a great story, right, about this girl who dreams of being the screaming paintball champion and she has an idol and she wants to be just like her idol and she's trying to qualify to get into the big leagues and to her actually um come up with a team has been a struggle in itself and the team is like people keep telling me this this is like a bad news bear type of um comic or like a major league type of comic if you guys ever seen those movies where you get the worst players on your team but they kind of persevere and they're the underdog story and they wind up winning at the end of the day that's kind of what this story is but the main character trini is great because you could get to see her heart and soul and her passion in this sport and what she which she truly loves right and uh, they go against this they go against this group right here called the Bubble City uh, Bullets, right? And they're rich and they got everything and you're led to believe that they're going to win. And then, of course, you come across, you know, Trini's group and she recruits this one dude that's like got mutated and he becomes like a zombie and he kills everybody on the opposing team and they wind up winning. It's absolutely great. It's such a joy to read this comic book. It's very low key. I don't think a lot of people are reading it. It's from Boom. Check it out, guys. This is something that you're not going to want to pass up. It's a lot of fun. Definitely another A-plus comic book for me. I cannot wait for issue three and to see how the tournament develops here. Read this book, everybody. There you have it, Webheads. There are all the books that I read so far this week. I still got a few more left to go. But uh, if you haven't checked out Worthy Ones yet, I'll leave that video here as well as a Kickstarter for the new Terminator 40th edition. You're going to want to check that out. You might want to back that out. So those videos are for you to click on. And of course, guys, as always, support the local comic shops. Keep buying, keep collecting, but always read, remember to read those comics, Mike Spider Slayer, so we can have that great comic conversation. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.